two weeks and three hours is kind of hard. Okay, we're on. Okay, so, so here's the point of why I'm mentioning Ezekiel 36.23, the word halal, the word kadosh, why I even mention the word invoking Christianity, or I'm giving you the history of the church a little bit with the, the Council of Nicaea and where we find ourselves today. And why I started to talk about what I'm referring to as the Mishkan pattern. If we're waiting for Yahweh to do something, and he's waiting for us to do something, it's like a stare down. Who's going to blink first? We're going to sit here until he does something. This is, I got eternity. You, got, you may be out all day, but I got eternity. So I'll sit here until my people do what I said for my people to do. What did he tell to do? If you read Ezekiel, what I'm saying is that the first 34, 35 chapters is a is month of trouble. Chapter 37 on to the end of the book, about I think it's around chapter 45 or so, is good things happening. Where is the tipping point? Where where's this where the where the bad things become good things? Where's the what is the fulcrum that that turns things? And looking closer, it seemed to be Ezekiel 36, 23. You know, you could read it for yourself. And then if that's the tipping point, then you have to say, what conditions have to exist for that to happen? And Yahweh says, when you make my Shem Kadosh instead of Kalal, then I will step in and crank it up and make it more Kadosh. Uh, I mean, it's like if you turn on a jet airplane and then you hit the afterburners and that thing just, you know, like hitting the nitro on the cars, that's what he's going to do. But if he's been waiting for his people all this time to be making his Shem Kadosh, and we haven't because we didn't know we should, and we've inherited the story of Jesus Christ, and the story of Jesus Christ, for the best that anybody could make of it, he was of questionable parentage. Nobody knew who his father really was. Oh, no, we have the story. It's in the Gospels. It wasn't Joseph. It was the Holy Spirit. It's like, well, that's a debatable, questionable, kind of mysterious. Uh, you can believe what you want, but it's still pretty mysterious. Even the rabbi said, ah, aren't you that guy that you're... How'd, how'd you get impregnated anyway? You know, so it's a questionable parentage. If he was the one who was worthy to be the high priest and he was denied the priesthood, he fits that. They did punch holes into him and drain out his butt. He fit that. They considered him to be vile and common and vulgar, profane. And they said, just get this guy out of our face. Just, just string him up and bury him. We were tired of looking at his face. All those are the meaning of the word chabal. And to begin something new. Well, on account of him, we now have the New Testament, the Christian church. What I'm suggesting is if you look at the word halal, everything concerning the story of Jesus Christ fits it like a hand in a glove. And it happens to be where we get the word hell. You can say, well, what has he got to do with hell? The concept of being desecrated, pierced, wounded unto death, he was. What became of the Torah on account of him? He was the Torah made flesh. On account of him, the Jews and the Romans slew wounded the Torah unto death. The Torah made flesh was put to death. The Christians on account of him have said, we don't need no stake in the Torah, and the Torah on account of him has been put to death. What I'm saying is this, is this ironic sort of exchange between the two ideas. Not to belabor that. I'm also not saying that every Christian is going to hell, nor am I saying every Jew is going to hell. And I'm not saying that the Christian church is all bad, and every Christian believer is a lunatic. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, we have believed what we were taught by our great leaders, who we gave respect and said, you guys read, we don't. You guys know the truth, we don't. We're listening to you, tell us the truth. And yet the scriptures say that in the later days, men will come up and say, we've inherited nothing but lies from our leaders, from the ones that were teaching us. And then there's other verses where Yahweh says, I have put upon your wise men and your sages and your leaders a spirit of blindness and a deep sleep. They cannot understand my words. And I'm saying it's not the devil that did it, it's Yahweh. Why? Because we profane and vilified and despised and abhorred his words. And there's, I'm using words that are translations from Hebrew words when I say vilified, profane. And he says, you guys acted treacherously. You betrayed me, he said of Israel, regarding his covenant. And so by me using these words like treacherous and betrayal, those are words right out of the scriptures of Yahweh's own complaint against his people. And I'm not saying, yeah, those dirty, right, stinking Christians. It's all of us. It's all of us. What I'm saying is there's one way back. And the one way back is to regard his words. And to make his Shem Gadol. So what I'm going to show you here is how I believe that the Hebrew alphabet is his Shem Gadol. And so by talking about the alphabet, 
we are making his Shem Gadol in the eyes of the Goyim nations amongst whom we've been scattered. So by having a meeting like this, where we are making his Shem Kadosh, his Gadol, his great, where we get the word Migdal. If you go to Jerusalem, there's this place called the Migdal of David, or the Tower of David. The word Migdal is like this towering thing of preeminent, wow, look at that. That is like Goliath would have been a, a Migdal, one who is of this great stature. By making Yahweh's name of great stature and regard, and wow, look at Yahweh, he's so awesome. That is making his Shem Gadol. But what's his Shem? Is it good hey, Bob, hey? So if the Jews call him Hashem or Adonai, and everybody else calls him Lord or God or Elohim, what about yod hey, Bob, hey? I'm, I'm suggesting that it's not just calling him Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahweh. If you know his name now, you're making it great. It's not about that name, because the word Shem is name, fame, renown, and reputation. So what I'm trying to show you is that the meaning of every single one of these Hebrew letters is his reputation. It is his occupation and his fame and his renown. Because his name, yud heh vav is three of the letters, one of the letters repeated twice, but there's 22. So the Christians talk about the Trinity. What's the definition of the Trinity? Well, three and one, one and three, the triune God. The best I've heard someone describe it, I heard a, some theologian on the radio and somebody was questioning about that, he said, well, okay. Us great theologians who think and ponder these things and have access to all the writings of all the ancient saints and everybody else who put their mind to this, in a nutshell, the best we can describe of the Trinity is that it's a mystery that you just have to believe because we say so. <laughs> That's what the guy said. What I'm saying, Yahweh gave us, and I'll try to prove the point to you, that Yahweh gave these 22 letters describing himself. So what he really is, it's not a triune or a trinity, he's a twenty-two-ity. <laughs> Twenty-two letters describe him. And then every one of these letters are all inclusive of the other twenty-two. It's a there's a holographic image. A holographic image is a, one of these three-dimensional things. The, one of the first ones they ever came out with is a girl blowing a kiss. And she walked around, you could see her blow a kiss and then wink at you. Now they've got 3D movies, but a hologram, a hologram, I get this right, the hologram is, is um, anyway, one of them is made, written in the hand of the author. If you write out a will, and it's a, I think it's a holograph is what it is, holograph, if, if you write it out in your own hand, that's a holograph, which means it's in the hand of the author. I'm saying that this is a holograph. The, the hand of Elohim wrote these words and those letters. He designed them, he determined them, he thought them up in heaven, before he ever made the universe, and then he rolled out the universe in the seven-day sequence of the map of the creation days, as well as the seven festivals, as well as he made this Mishkan, where we get the word Shekinah, which is where we get the word Taverno, which is tavern, which is tabernacle in Greek, which is the place of his hanging out with his people, the local watering hole, which is the Mishkan, all the same word, that he designed that pattern, the word is Tabanit, which is this word over here in red, which is Tav bet nun yod tav. Well, bet nun yod is my son or my people, my children. Tav bet nun yod tav. Tav is the sign of the covenant, so you have the first one and the second one, or the old one and the later one. Nevertheless, it's my son wrapped up in the covenant is the word for pattern. The pattern of the Mishkan is tabanit. That's the word pattern. We're going to get the word cabinet as a box or a container, but similar to cabinet to tabanit. So if Yahweh gave himself, declared, revealed in these 22 letters. And in these 22 letters was the map of the sequence of the seven days of creation, which is the exact same pattern as the map of the sequence of the seven festivals, which is the exact same pattern as the map of the pattern of the Mishkan. These three things are Kadosh. The word Kadosh, Kuf Dalachin, right out of his, what flame flooding out of his mouth that was pure and clean, that which he cleansed things with, it like dousing something with water. The things out of his mouth are kadosh. Nothing else is kadosh. I mean, we were talking about Enochian, about Emmet. I mean, we're going to see if you're, the word is kadosh. I mean, really, I mean, what I see what you're saying here is that you're taking the aspect of the entirety, all of Taha, which is the word of God, which is the memra, right? Which is what, with that, which is that which was from the beginning, right? And you're, you're disseminating that into its multiple spectrums. Right? And really, you're, 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 we're talking about the Word. We're talking about Elohim, El El which is the Word of God, or Yeshua. 
Now, the pre-incarnate Word of God. Well, here, I'll throw another twist on what you just said. Let's look at John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. I'll talk. Now, now let's, let's take this as a riddle first. Hang on a second. Let's take it as a riddle. Not a statement of doctrine, but a riddle. I'm going to ask you what the Word is. Here. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Elohim. And the Word was Elohim. Well, how, how can you be with and also was? How can you be but be with? It's a riddle. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Elohim. The Word was Elohim. All things were made by Him. Without Him, it, the Word, nothing was made that was made. And then you go down the line a little bit, and the Word became flesh and dwelt with us. Now, what was the Word? Yeah. Aleph Tav? Which is the entirety of God, which is the entirety okay, well, of all. It was Yeshua. Okay, now, hang on a minute. Yeshua is the Word? Well, no, not in King James, but... Uh, or, or, what are you asking for? I guess in Greek? What was the Word? English? No, the Word. The Word that became flesh. What was the Word? Logos. The Logos is Greek. And the, logo, yeah. the, the, the best I can come up with, the Logos, I've read a couple different studies on that, was kind of like this... Um, Kind of this Hindu kind of concept of the hum of the universe that, um, you know, it's like this, this vibrational of the universe. That's kind of what the word logos meant uh, in, in a sense. Is that the word? No, I just thought the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was a description of a Christian term. It was Jesus. Jesus okay. But Jesus isn't the word. Jesus or Yeshua, you might say, so was only the difference between the two, is the word made flesh. So you could say, oh, that guy, Yeshua, is the word in flesh form. But what was the word? Well, the Torah is a list of instructions, but what was the word? Huh? The Al-Tab. Well, that's what he said. But I'm trying to prove the point. See, it's like, you guys, like, read the answer, but give the answer before you go. Trying to sidestep it for a moment. Oh, you said, <laughs> you a chance to think. Said, you know, this is like the, the, the Omega code right. in, 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 in uh, pictographic Hebrew. It's really what you're, really what you're breaking so down. So here, I'll cut to the chase about the riddle. Okay. Fill in the blank. What could it possibly be? What word is it? It was with Elohim. Well, that means it isn't Elohim, but it's something that was with him. But it is Elohim. Well, if it is him and it's not him, how could it be him? That's its own riddle, which I'll explain in a moment. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Okay, so if, if he had... Picture him having a tool. 